Okay, focusing on the international break. Lads, this is a big, big one. I know it is for you guys, especially. The US men's national team are back in World Cup qualifying for the first time since 2017. My question to you is, are the USA favorites to qualify for the 2022 World Cup from the CONCACAF region? Think about that carefully. I'm just going to say, are they favorites to qualify for the World Cup? Because wait four years now for this chance, this shot of redemption. We're all, we've all been talking about Trinidad and Tobago and the horrors there and the ghost of the, that shocking loss late in the qualifying campaign. So it starts, you can watch the games on Telemundo Deportes on NBC Universo. So all those details are on Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com to watch all the World Cup qualifiers from the CONCACAF region. So gents, the USA start with playing at El Salvador, then they're at home against Canada, and they're playing at Honduras. First three games, I'd say that's, that's okay, right? So Nick Mendola, how are you feeling about the squad and what kind of, uh, what's the vibe with you heading into this opening set of World Cup qualifiers for the USA? Super excited. Super <laughs> excited to watch this team. Now, are they favorites? Yes. They, they absolutely are because I look wow. at the other teams around and, and to me, unless Jamaica seals Mikel Antonio, unless they seal some of these guys before they play the U.S. Look, Greg Berhalter, I, Cuba was terrible. Trinidad and Tobago, and the going out was absolutely brutal. I hated it. It was embarrassing. But what it did is I think they're coming out of this going from – the overperformer will punch you in the face where the USA team, we've got Clint Dempsey and Michael Bradley, and no one appreciates us. Then they underachieve. They don't get the job done under two managers, one, at, one in big name in Europe, the other, uh, the biggest name besides maybe Bob Bradley in, in Bruce Arena. And I think if these, as they've built out of this, as, as Dave Sarakin gave people a chance to break into the team, Greg Berhalter's made some mistakes along the way, but at this point, they're coming at teams as we're going to out soccer you. We're going to out football you. Mm. We've got the tactics. We've got the skill. We have just about everything. Are there some questions about center back? Of course. Is there a question of whether they have a Tim Howard or Brad Friedel ex goalkeeper? Yes. But for the most part, the expectation is they can and will win every game. Uh, and my only warning to everyone out there is that this is a very heavy European-based team who's going to fly to El Salvador and then to Nashville, at, from Europe, by the way, and then to Honduras. So the odds of teams having absolute duds, while Honduras is a, is a heavy team based in Central America, El Salvador heavily based there, um, there, there will be duds along the way. But with this many games, there's more forgiveness. And I, I, it would be absolutely shocking if they were even in question of advancing. Um, so I, I guess prepare to be shocked, but does it make sense? I'm pumped, Joe. Let's get let's, let's watch these games. This sounds very similar to the last World Cup qualifying cycle. I'm not going to lie. Like this, really, I, I feel like there is um, the expectation levels are high for a reason this time because the Gold Cup, obviously the success, Nations League, it's a totally different team. I get it, but I do feel like there is uh, maybe a an overconfidence, I would say, maybe around the US right now. It's not going to be easy for these young guys to play in these environments. And you said it, Greg Bohart has built the squad so that players know that this unique experience of playing three games in an international window is going to be, it's going to be different. Uh, it's a slightly bigger squad and players are prepared for that to rotate. But Andy, I see you kind of nodding your head and then disagreeing a little bit. So I'll let you jump in. But um, there's some players that need to step up, right? Pulisic is fit. Yeah. He's, he's, he's back training with the team and obviously Weston McKenney and Tyler Adams. Now they've been hearing that they're the future, they're the new generation. And it's great to have good performances in friendly games and win, you know, a, a, they didn't play in the Gold Cup, but the second string win the Gold Cup and win the Nations League. But now is go time, right? The last three or four years, you can almost brush all of that to one side. And, and now it, this is it. Doesn't matter. Nothing that's happened between now and when we failed to qualify for the last World Cup actually matters at this point. And that's the that's the exciting part. That's also a little bit of the scary part because all the progress that has been made is now going to be graded over the next year or so to see if this team can get to the World Cup. And, you know, you say overconfidence. I don't necessarily disagree, but I welcome that. 
right now because this is a group of young players, and we've talked about that a lot, that has big beliefs, that has big dreams, has big goals, and now is the time where they finally, for the national team, get to go out there and try to achieve the very first one, the most yeah. basic of them, qualify for the World Cup. And so, you know, this is what they have been building towards for these last three years, four years almost, since they failed to qualify for the last World Cup. So I'm in a point where the more confidence they bring in, bring in all of the confidence, and let's really take that and and, and, and let's hold on to that. Let's harness that and turn it into something because they've spent the last few years talking about this moment. The moment is finally here, and I don't look at the roster, and I don't see a single player on there that I think will shrink from the moment, from the challenge of what is CONCACAF, of going into Central America to some of these difficult places to play, or even if they're playing at home and they're the de facto away team because more fans from the other nation are, are inside the stadium. I don't think that's going to be an issue for this team because of where some of these players play for, what the expectations that they live and breathe and play and train under every single day are. This probably seems like a cakewalk. Honestly, because they get to go back to CONCACAF. They get to go back to the national team. And you can tell with this group, these players, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal for them to be on the national team. And not that it wasn't before. I'm not saying that. But they carry that, I guess, that honor in a way that they don't just want to achieve what's expected of them. I think they want more. And so I'm just... I'm letting myself get really excited. I'm I'm setting myself up to be broken and disappointed, I know, but I real I believe everything that I just said there. I really do. Two yeah. words, Joe. I, Two words. Yeah. Go ahead. Weston McKenney. Um, Two more Christian Pulisic. Gio Reyna. Well, so so let me tell you why. And, and that was the next name I was going to mention, but for different reasons. Christian Pulisic, if things get dicey, is the guy who's going to tell them, I was on the field at age 18 after playing, by the way, a heck of a game and a heck of a tournament in tears. I was there. You might look at me now as Chelsea guy, whatever, but I remember this. I remember falling short. And Weston McKinney's, for lack of a better term, and I, I think this is overused, swagger. He's got, he had this confidence of someone who's achieved before he achieved. And he's gone, he's played with Ronaldo. He's played under Pirlo. Not, so those are two guys, let alone that quiet engine of Tyler Adams. This is not me being overconfident, but because it's a young group coming up that has been spurned, that knows their reputation, that has known failure. And just to me, like this may actually be a slightly disappointing window. Maybe they, you know, maybe they, they only get six points. Maybe they lose in Honduras at the tail end after all that travel. But to me, I have zero doubt, frankly, because the United States in this region should never, uh, double negative here, never not qualify. Uh, that's what's so shocking about Cuba is it mm. shouldn't have gotten that far and it still shouldn't have happened. They didn't even need to win that game. And a ghost goal mm. puts it over the line the other way. So it's happening, Joe. Uh, it's it, it might not look the best at times, but they're going to get there. Yeah, I think we can all agree that this is the most talented team that the U.S. has had in a long, well, ever. This is a, a new era. We, Guys at Juventus, Barcelona, Chelsea, Leipzig, Dortmund, just ripping it up week in, week out, playing regularly at such a young age. This is uncharted territory for this team. Um, yeah, so it's exciting. We're all very excited about this. And I, I want to know just quick predictions. How many points are they going to get from these first three games? Go. Seven. Seven. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you're okay. always going to have a letdown kind of performance. And in World Cup qualifying, if your letdown is a draw and you can still manage to grind out a result in not the best circumstances or if the game's not played on your terms, uh, e even that will be a small hurdle cleared, I think, for this yeah. team. Just just tick the box, difficult situation, bad luck, maybe a red card goes against them or something, still got a result. That's a big part of the international game. It really is. <laughs> they may yeah. show up to Honduras and there might be a tree in the middle of the field. Like that's <laughs> that's how high the grass might be. Like that's what they have yeah. to get used to. And, and that's why I think I'm excited. First road game is El Salvador. With all due respect to El Salvador, um, it's a win. You know, so you get a road win out of the way. Canada at home is tough. Canada at home is tough. Maybe that's the draw. But I like the way this sets up for them. Okay. All right. So my next question is, who are the biggest threats to the U.S. men's national team in World Cup qualifying? Because we've got 14 games now between now and March to decide that they're going to go to the World Cup. And I'm looking at the last three games on their schedule. I mean, 
th those three are tough. You want to be in a good situation before you get to the end there because last three games on the, the World Cup qualifying schedule, Mexico away, Panama at home, and Costa Rica away. So arguably mm. the two toughest away games in the last three. So you're going to have to get a lot of points on the board early on. But, you know, who do you guys think? Is it is it Mexico and the US on their own? Or we've mentioned Jamaica, obviously Costa Rica and Honduras have caused the US a lot of problems. Is Anybody else stand out there for you guys? I mean, Canada, right? I suppose they're the dark horses in CONCACAF. In the right window, I think Annie might agree with me, in the right window where depending on the who, who the U.S. has and who Canada brings up, this is still a team that can roll Davies out there and Jonathan David. Um, those are two potentially game-changing players. If Jamaica, again, I, I think their recruitment's been very interesting. If they can gel, they're a team that can beat the U.S. I think Costa Rica's down. Um, the reason I would worry about those last three games is you hope that maybe both the U.S. and Mexico have it mostly settled because Panama and Costa Rica will probably still be playing for something at mm -hmm. playing desperately yeah. for something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, the, the, the risks of losing points early um, are, are Mexico springing an upset on U.S. soil. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's going away to Jamaica and Canada and losing. Those last three, by the time you go to Mexico, I, I think you hope it's pretty much sewn up. Maybe, you're, you know, you might need some out-of-town help on the scoreboard, but for the most part, you hope by those three games, you, your path is, well, this could go wrong, and this could go wrong, and this could go wrong, and we'd still make it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just getting excited thinking about all these <laughs> games here we, we, and how congested it is. Obviously, due to COVID, the whole World Cup qualifying schedule has been pushed back. It's been expanded to more teams and more games. Uh, it's not the hex anymore, obviously. It's the octagonal. So it's it's like this is a whole new scenario. And I'm so excited to see this play out and how this young team can navigate it because this is going to be grueling between here and March. Mm. There's a lot of pressure, high stakes every game. And yeah, with Canada throw it into the mix who just haven't been in this situation for a long, long time now. Yeah. I think that adds extra pressure to the likes of Honduras and Costa Rica mm. and Panama who usually think, you know what, worst case scenario, we'll probably finish in that fourth spot and we'll get into a playoff. Now, I think Canada's looking like the favourites to at least finish in the top four out of those eight teams. So, Andy, any other... I'm really worried about Jamaica on the US. Mikel Antonio has obviously committed his, his future to Jamaica. Um, again, there's the whole situation with the red list countries that we talked about last time and you know, that's going to rob certain nations of certain players for certain games. You have to throw that into the mix as well. So this is interesting, right? This is really, really interesting in terms of who is going to cause the USA problems. I am a little worried about Jamaica just because of some of the individuals and what they can do on their day. But I think at the end of the day, all talent accumulated together and, and the the continuity that the U.S. has bred over the last couple of years, especially since Greg Berhalter has finally been installed as the head coach and everything that he's worked on, I think lifts him over any kind of the of the rising nations. And so it really does come down to the U.S. and Mexico for, say, a 1-2 a or 2-1 finish, however you want to call it. The third spot and fourth spot to me, though, are just going to be so incredible. I, I'll, tell, I'll say this to USMNT fans. If you've been a fan of the U.S. for a long time and you've watched them in World Cup qualifying and you've not paid attention to the other games going on on the same day as the U.S., do yourself a favor this cycle. Watch some of the other games because we are going to have some just incredibly desperate teams out there against incredibly desperate teams, and it's going to make for incredible drama in theater in CONCACAF. So I like Canada because I think maybe – I think against anybody in the region, they could have the two best players on the field in Alfonso mm -hmm. Davies and Jonathan David on a given day. I just don't know that they have anything else in that team that, yeah. that can even come close to reaching those two's level. So can they drag them to fourth place? It would be incredible. It would be great to have a third very, very strong national team in this region to challenge the U.S., to challenge Mexico on a regular basis. I just think they're a little bit farther away from it. It's probably Jamaica. I, I hope Jamaica would be such a great addition to the World Cup if they can get there. Yeah, Jamaica and Canada, teams to watch out for in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying gents. It's just around the corner, of course, on Pro Soccer Talk or NBCSports.com. We'll have you covered throughout the international break. News, uh, recaps, analysis and reaction from the U.S. men's national team is Greg Bohart's young side, very talented side. Look to take on that mantle as the favourites from the CONCACAF region to qualify for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. 
it's going to be tough. It's going to be grueling, but we know we're in a very different situation now, gents, than we were five years ago, World Cup qualifying. A lot of, uh, a lot of changes have happened. A lot of new players have come into the mix. And I think we can all agree the USA is in a much better position than it was in the last World Cup qualifying cycle. So let's see how it goes. And of course, I've crossed the NBC Sports family on NBC Universal and on Telemundo Deportes. We'll have you covered with everything you need from World Cup qualifying in CONCACAF. As you can tell, we're all absolutely buzzing for this. <laughs> Cannot wait for it to finally kick off and for the US to show up in World Cup qualifying. So gents, all that for me to say is thanks so much for joining me. It's been a crazy start to the season with the Premier League, the transfer window, all the big moves. And now we head into the international break and in a busy, busy few months. So enjoy it. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll speak to you all very soon indeed. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.